Tonight, on a special Mardi Gras edition of Night Watch. Hold up, he's awake and he's been shot in the head. So let's get him going while we got a chance. Oh. Rescue just got on scene and they're telling him they need the cutters, so he's definitely impaled on the fence. Oh. We get a call for one of the band members that is now down. How you feeling? Not too good, huh? The local bar was robbed and we jump in the chase. In the city of New Orleans, there are as many as 1,000 emergency calls every night. These are the stories of the heroes who risk their lives to answer those calls. Police officers, firefighters, and emergency medical technicians. This is Nightwatch. I love working for the city of New Orleans. It's my city. It has its own spirit, pulse, and identity. And it's never better than during Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras is New Orleans. It's the biggest party in the world, you know? It's nothing like it. Mardi Gras is insanity fest. I mean, it's it's a big deal. All right, everybody, good evening. Another parade tonight. There's a bunch of them, and it's going to be a late, late night tonight. Mardi Gras is about two weeks, but the Friday before Fat Tuesday up to Fat Tuesday, that's the main five days of Mardi Gras. Your uniforms look good tonight. You're doing a good job. Like I said, it's going to be long. All right, be nice to the people. Do what we do best. Give them good service. And I'll see y'all there. Be careful. Be safe. What up, boy? So look, Mardi Gras is our time to shine. It's a fun time to be working. I absolutely love working Mardi Gras. You know, I mean, you're going to work your ass off. It's all hands on deck. 14, 16, 17-hour shifts. Police, fire, public works. Every paramedic you have employed here is on the streets running calls. Get very little sleep and come right back the next day and do it again. Thirty two forty seven, you don't have to respond, but I have thirty two thirty two in route. Fifty two forty seven, we're gonna go. Damn it. Damn it. Thirty two thirty two, you copy? Yep. All right, lean on the unit. Thirty two thirty two on scene. We get a call for a man down. We hear the sprint unit say that he's working a coat. They are not breathing, they have no pulse. You give him anything yet? No. Pull mine off. He was breathing when y'all got it? Yeah. You got pads on him? He just pulled him off. Fire department's on scene. Our sprint unit's already there. We're doing CPR with the Lucas device, trying to bring this person back to life. All right, just get him on a stretcher. The Lucas machine that we use works so well doing chest compressions. All right, let's go up. It's doing better CPR than any person could ever do, and it never gets tired. He was breathing when we got here. We called it in. Is it down? Some guys walking in the store, yeah. So nobody knew him? No. The people said he was walking around right before. He seemed pretty normal, and then he just collapsed. So you're thinking one of two things. You're thinking cardiac or you're thinking drug overdose. You want to give Narcan? It ain't going to hurt anything. If you potentially did some opiate drug, we'll give you Narcan to reverse the effects of that. Anybody got a uh, rescue pod? His heart is in ventricular fibrillation. Basically, the bottom parts of his heart are quivering. We need them to stop, and we need them to beat like they are supposed to. All right, he's getting amio and epi now. Amio, which is amiodarone, is an antiarrhythmic drug that's used in ventricular arrhythmias. Epi is epinephrine. It's like pure adrenaline for the heart. All right, amio in. When you have a run of V-fib and nothing's working. Man, like he will not come out of fib. Medicine and shock is only two options that you really have. Watch though, let go, move. Pop it. Shock. I'm gonna pop him again, all right? Pop it. Without a rhythm change, we're gonna shock him as many times as it takes to 
hopefully restart the heart. Stop. Stop. One, two, three, four, five. Boy, go get your monitor. Yep. Part of our protocol is to do what we call double sequential defibrillations. And for that, you need two cardiac monitors. Your monitor's on? Yep. Tag team it. We're giving double the juice, trying to change the outcome for the better. You ready? Charge. Charge. Don't shock, I'll tell you to shock. All right, one, two, three. Yeah. Double shock. We shocked him several times. We double shocked him several times. We gave him Epi, Amiodarone, Narcan. This is the shocks, 010305. Yeah. You need Epi and another two. Yep. We've done everything we can do at this point. I'll go off of this. Word? Word. What our goal is now is to get him to the hospital so maybe they can do something a little different. Coming to you with a code. He's been VFib the whole time, even after one, two, three, four, five, six, seven shots. No change. And he just moved. Yep. His heart is not beating, and that thing's beating his heart so well that he just turned his head and looked at that man right there. The best CPR machine in the world. The crazy thing about it is, is that, you know, we're giving you oxygen, we're giving you all these great meds. You know, you have everything in you right now that you need. And then with that Lucas doing such a good job with CPR, yep. he's got a really good chance. Yep. Better than most. Yeah, absolutely. We do still run shootings. We do still run cardiac arrests. You know, there's still New Orleans going on. We're going to a shooting. Dude, first night, and it's crazy. Right. Well, just because it's Mardi Gras doesn't mean criminals take the day off. Man, get shot in the head on Mardi Gras. No, that's the that's part that you hate to hear. Like, you hear somebody shot, it's Mardi Gras. You almost think somebody playing around with a gun. They could be shot in the leg or something. And then when they come back and say that they got one in the head. Take somebody evil to walk up to somebody shoot yeah. them in the head. Man. Definitely right about that. All right, we've got a code four. Jeremy's on scene. 3220, we on scene. Is he awake? Yeah, he is. He is? Oh, excellent. With that kind of injury, I'm expecting to not really do anything. I'm expecting to walk up and see someone with an injury that's not compatible with life. Watch that case in right there, Titus. It's Mardi Gras, man. So that time is supposed to be a time of fun. The check is a time of violence for this particular family. What you got, Jeremy? Look, he shot in the left foot and he shot in the head. Right here and here. Eyes are all swollen up and he's got holes on each side. Yeah. Like entrance exit? It looks like entrance entrance only. Uh, 3220 contact. I've seen a lot of gunshot wounds, but to have that kind of injury and be completely awake, man, it was just all striking to me. Hold up, he's awake and he's been shot in the head. I got it. I let Mama put this on your neck, all right? All right. Oh, Let's get him going while we got a chance. What you got, Jeremy? Look, he shot in the left foot and he shot in the head. Right here and here. There's a lake alert talking, knows his name, knows everything. OK, great. Let's get him going while we got a chance. I let Mama put this on your neck, all right? All right. Oh, we got called to the scene of a male with multiple gunshot wounds through the head. We're going to get you taken care of, man. I just couldn't believe with the injury that I'm seeing in his head that he was awake and speaking. Hold his head. Yeah, watch that. Uh... All right, come on back. Come on back. All right. Hey, man, you awake? Mm -hmm. My name's Dan. I'm a paramedic, OK? Mm -hmm. I'm going to go on taking you to the hospital. Mm -hmm. You allergic to any medicines? Mm -hmm. You take any medicines? Mm -hmm. Do you have any medical conditions? OK. What is your name? Tony Hankton? Yeah. Give me this hand. Give me this hand. Tell him. Give me this hand. Besides your head, are you hurting anywhere else from there? My head hurts. Your head hurt? Yeah. Hey, look, I need this arm, Tony. Yeah, yeah. Keep talking to me, dude. What's going on? Tell what's going on, man? You remember what happened? 
I got a blood pressure one part of the stylus. Thank you. As many gunshots I've been on, I've never seen a through and through like that, how it went in one temple out the other. I mean, the way it happened is just only you can see that on television. You don't see that in real life. I did you to take nice deep breaths, my man. Nice You're going to feel a big stick. Ah. Big stick, do not move your arm. One, two, three. I know, man. I'm sorry. All right, man, we out the door, dude. I need you to stay awake, OK? You awake? Stay awake. You were driving that silver car? Yeah? All right. Someone that wasn't shot in the head, I can look at them and see if their eyes are open and blinking. With him, I couldn't do that. Tally, stay awake. That's a big factor to know whether or not your patient's deteriorating or not is if they remain conscious. Hey, it's Dan with New Orleans Unit 3220 en route to you with an approximately 25 to 30-year-old male. Uh, Chief complained of multiple gunshot wounds. He's currently awake and oriented. He's got a gunshot wound to his right temple and a gunshot wound to his left temple. It appears that he has uh, likely an entrance to his left temple and an exit to his right temple. He also has a single GSW to the anterior surface of his left foot. No other injuries noted at this time. He was actually driving a vehicle when this happened, and someone opened fire on his vehicle and struck him in his temple over here. And you want to get him to the hospital quick because you don't know what's going on inside of his head. He may be bleeding a lot. It may have hit his brain. It may have done more damage than what we suspect, and he can deteriorate rapidly in the truck. 3220 at the hospital, 3218, both times 18. He's in bad shape. Did you talk to him? I kept talking to him. He kept talking back. So you responded every time you. Uh, 100%. All right. And he knew the answer to every question I asked him. Yeah, the big ass hole in his head. It went through and through, man. His temple. That's a lot of damage. That's, his right eye was like he had a, a complete uh, open globe to the right. Really? And then his left had a fixed and dilated pupil. So, like. Who did he shot with? It looked like a 40, huh? That was a lot of damage, so it had to have been probably a 9 or a 40. Man, you get shot with anything in the head. Yeah, but I mean, a 22 might bounce off, depending on how thick your head is. One of them T-Row heads, you never know. All right, all right. You know him for the uh, nah, again. He'll live. I mean, but he'll never see again. It's gonna be crazy. Yeah, so it many is. people out already. Last night. Look at this dude, guy. What's up, man? What up, boo? You're sneaking off. What's up, bro? <laughs> How you doing, man? I'm all right, man. Good. You walking tonight? On Short the stuff. Yeah, you I'm walking. It. I'm about a couple of blocks away. Yeah. Hopefully tonight will be a better night. Shoot, yeah. I'm hoping for the door. <laughs> <laughs> it is pulling out. What's up? Look at that. What's up, What's up, man? What's up, man? How you doing, bro? What's up, Good, man? man? They had to switch out two up, huh? The only one be uptown with the hitters no more. <laughs> y'all got promotion, so it's all yeah. good. Congrats to y'all. Yeah, man. Y'all yeah. deserve it. Yep. Yeah. Day two. Y'all ready? I just hopefully no, no shooting. Man, it's too many people for them to be shooting. Yeah. Too, too, too many, many kids. Innocent thoughts, too, many innocent. too many old people. Right. Too many paramedics to get <laughs> shot. <laughs> <laughs> He's the one Keep it to the drunks and the fights. And drunks there you and the go. Fights. We yeah. good. We good. Y'all yeah. come back and holler at us, man. I got you, man. Y'all right. need anything, you know. Same, same way. Same way. My brother. Come here. All right, All right. We'll see you. <laughs> y'all be good. Well, that was nice. Love those dudes. You know, they both got promoted to sergeants. Which is amazing. Yeah, yo. Yeah, that's awesome. They deserve them. it. Yeah. Dude, this is my favorite part of high school. Yeah. It was marching in the parade. One in the band, I don't know. And I was a cheerleader. Oh. Nick and I are standing up watching one of the parades outside of the truck, and we get a call for one of the band members that is now down. Where is that? It's going to be South Liberty Canal, 3023. Oh, that's right. Okay. Right up there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we're going to have to bring the stretcher across the parade route. I don't know. When you're in a marching band during Mardi Gras, you are marching several miles every day. So it can be a dangerous situation for somebody who may have a pre-existing medical condition. Look, yeah, they are. 32, 32 on scene. 17-year-old, uh, uh, marching. Uh, just straight down. How you feeling? Not 
not too good, huh? When somebody passes out, you want to rule out the most life-threatening emergency that you can get. So first off, see if they can wake up. See what their speech pattern is. Make sure it's not neurological. Get some vital signs. See what's going on with their body so you can kind of plan a course of action to help this person. Nick, are we crossing the route? The challenges of, you know, actually picking someone on the parade route is your crowd. It's like being in the middle of a riot. You have to stay focused, keep yourself and your patients safe, and be able to get them into your truck without you know, any further harm. So we crossing the road or what? I don't know how old she is. 17. 17? Yeah, she can go to two lanes. Hey, how are you feeling? Let me have that guy. Give us just a minute, all right? Can you tell me your name? Gabby? Are you hurting anywhere? No? You were marching in the parade? Yeah? You will be all right, sweetie. So did you see what happened? But the kids, they said that she had shown the signs, anything, she just hit the ground. Any possibility you could be pregnant, sweetie? No? OK. There's always a little bit of relief when their eyes are open and they're speaking. You know, this, this person looks OK right now. So, you know, they're not dead, and that's a great thing. Um, I can work with that. I think you're dehydrated is what happened. Probably from, you know, wearing the jumpsuit and everything, being hot. What she said? What she said? You missed it. Talking about the parade? The end? That's what you said? Of the parade? Aw. Are you a senior? Aw, boo. Feeling any better? She's upset because she's missing the end of the parade. She's a senior. You know, our hearts go out to Gabby because she worked so hard for this and her experience got stolen from her from a medical issue. 32, 32, left too late. It's Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. Are women at home with no men? Well, that we know of. Right. <laughs> Canal indicator. Canal indicator. We do have the stabbing. I think Keely's supposed to be on your scene. Keely's on scene. Says it's definitely going to be a trauma activation. Right. Where is he stabbed at, Joe? In the neck. In the neck? Damn. Would you like to know why it's so hot in here? Dan and Titus <laughs> just turned our heater on high. So pay We got to get them back. I'm thinking nitro paste on the door handles. Oh, no, I don't want anybody <laughs> But I'm seriously <laughs> thinking D50. In the air. I like it. I cannot, in good conscience, allow Dan to go another call without... Without being sticky. Being sticky, like I feel like. Just remember, he, you know this. He's he gonna every this. time he has a reach up to his neck, every time he moves, he's gonna be thinking about <laughs> do not <laughs> with them anymore. His shirt is gonna be so crinkly and crunchy. <laughs> so when you're leaving, you should point at Titus and say, "You're next. <laughs> you're next." Let's do it. Mm. Do some big push-ups. <laughs> 32, 32, 32, 32, 32, 32, 32, 32. All right, I put myself on a bathroom break, so we got to. 12, 30, 12, 30. Let's do it. So I heard you got a little altercation. Got hit. Dude, we picked up. Where was that dude from, anyway? Remember? Right Come off the Esplanade. He's laying on the sidewalk. Right, right, right. Like in the uh, marinara. Actually, PD, ah, what the <laughs> <laughs> What are y'all doing? <laughs> Eater! <laughs> <laughs> Do it again. That shit is sticky, man. Give me some water. <laughs> All right. Huh? You know what's funny? Is I forgot I even did that. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I told them they were going to forget all about that. Hey, that was defensive, bro. Yeah. <laughs> sticky. I know. Y'all some. <laughs> I got in there. I was like, oh, what the? <laughs> ah, come on. I just gotta get rid of the uh uh. Bull <laughs> get out of here with that bull. <laughs> Your little silly ass ain't catching me. Whew. Chasing Dan wore me out, bro. That wore got me it. out. You got everybody. All three of us. <laughs> good job. I didn't mean to get you, but. Where's he stabbed at, Joe? In the neck. In the neck? 
we were called over to the parade route to uh, help a gentleman that had multiple stab wounds and lacerations to his head and neck. Right oh, yeah. Got his ear there. Yeah. All right. You have your carotid, which is one of your main arteries that run through your neck. So that's a big worry. And if that got nicked, then we worrying about him bleeding out. And blood is everywhere. What happened, man? I got to Conflict with a co-worker. Getting in a conflict, huh? Yeah. She called a bar, friend. Uh oh. So, that kind of conflict, huh? Right. So, we fight, we all cut me. I guess this guy was looking for a little Valentine love, you know? But this night went in a whole different direction. Oh, he got you in the nose, too. Yeah. What'd he cut you with? Yeah, that hit me with a blade. With a blade? He said he thinks it was a razor blade. Them boys ain't bought them fists no more, bro. Right. Valentine's Day is not supposed to be about fighting anyway. But you know what, thank God, it could have been a lot worse than what it was, dude. All right, dude, look, we'll get you to the hospital, all right? Thank you, Titus. 3220, show me code three, trauma son. So you said you think they got you with a razor blade? Yeah, we'll fight, man. I ain't feel nothing to, you know, somebody pull me back, do it like you bleed. Yeah. yeah. I'm just going to kind of lay this across your neck. Here, I think the worst one is the nose, because it feels kind of old. Yeah. I don't want you to blow it or do anything with that nose, OK? Say, bro, you must have been washing that boy. He probably ain't want no parts of you, bro. There were two of them on. And you still was still wearing them out. Say, bro, for him to, to pull out a blade, that boy, that's a sucker move. Only cowards do that. We're going to get you all fixed up. You're probably going to get a bunch of stitches in that I nose know, and neck, bro. man. The one on the nose you know, is you know, deep. This is going to be my first time having stitches. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Let's hope it's the last time, right? I hope so, too. Mardi Gras, my boat right into a wreck. Right up in there. We arrived on scene to a car crash between an SUV and a taxi cab. They actually hit so hard that the door was ripped off one of the vehicles and was stuck to the other. Hello. When that happens, you definitely kind of perk up because there could be some serious injury involved. Hey, what's your name? <laughs> what's your name? <laughs> All right. Broken what? <laughs> oh, OK. We see a female laying across the back seat with an obviously broken leg. How are we doing this? Let's put a board in here, slide her out. It's a 10 fit, right? Yeah. Open or closed? It looks closed. Everybody else is OK? Yeah. yeah, there's a little kid with a little bump on his eye, but he's fine. Cool. I think we need to slide her actually out. That way, we can kind of support her leg as much as possible. When you have a long bone fracture, you want to make sure that you mobilize that bone from moving around, especially when you're moving the patient around, because bad things can happen. You have a lot of blood vessels that run up and down your legs, and it can possibly cause you an injury that make things worse. All right, this is really going to suck. I'm going to go ahead and warn you, but I'm going to try to make it as easy as possible, OK? If you need to squeeze me, scream, whatever you need to do, do not be ashamed, OK? All right, I'm going to grab you under your arms, and I'm going to pull you onto this board. All right, this is really going to suck. I'm going to go ahead and warn you, but I'm going to try to make it as easy as possible, OK? If you need to squeeze me, scream, whatever you need to do, do not be ashamed, OK? All right, I'm going to grab you under your arms, and I'm going to pull you onto this board. My family got T-boned by a cab. Everybody's OK except for one patient who has a broken tip fib and a right leg. That's it. That's Straight. the worst of it. Straighten it out. I'm going to just move your torso. <laughs> Uncross your arms for just a second. No, leg hurts Nick, this so is right. you down there. <laughs> that's going to support your leg, OK? <laughs> It's almost over. All right, that's it. Just relax, OK? We're going to get you in the truck. We're going to give you some medicine. I'm going to go set that up. All right. Nick, you want morphine? Yeah. These are the last few bumps, OK? Darling is getting you in. You all right, boo? And this lady was in so much pain that she's actually physically shaking from the shock factor. And it kind of pulls at your heartstrings. So you want to make it as comfortable as possible for them. Luckily for us, we have medicine that we can give to kind of knock the edge off. Come back, kid. Everybody's fine. Everybody's good. And you're going to be fine. You're just going to have to have a little surgery on your leg. 
kind of put everything back together, but you're going to be OK. So this is going to be morphine. Straighten this arm out for me. Went ahead and gave five to All start. Right. Cool. Because you got five uh, morphine in. Beautiful. What did you get your leg caught on? Do you remember? Was it the center console? I don't know. I'm, I might have had my legs crossed. OK. My husband, the ER doctor. Okay, we're at. Okay, y'all here visiting? Yeah, we're Okay. good? Yeah, we're good, thank you. 3232, show us how much a Toro, one patient, one ten twelve. My four-year-old was right in front of me in the booster. Well, he was completely fine. So everybody was fine. I thought that you'd be unfortunate enough to get your leg broken, but it's okay. Exercise classes. Oh. Well, you might not be doing that too much, but I guarantee you'll be back on the feet quickly. This is nice and easy. It's a clean break, so it should be really easy to repair. The 35-year-old female, she's got a tip rib fracture. It's closed. She's got an IV with some morphine on board. She's fully immobilized. We'll see you in a couple of minutes. It really sucks, though. Think about it. I mean, people are just coming out of here, have a good time, trying to pay attention to the parades, and next thing you know, you got to Leg fracture is pretty much going to keep you out of. Oh man, she caught a bad break. <laughs> Honey. There you go. The way she <laughs> My new partner is Devin Ashmore. He's a veteran. He's been through a lot with the department, so you know I, I learn a lot from him. I really do. He's a pretty good driver, a little different than Justin, but still pretty good. <laughs> hate working the long hours during Mardi Gras. I haven't been to a parade as a spectator in eight years. 16, 18. People coming across the business and everyone inside. Everybody was on the floor. Perpetrators with black males all the way in. So they're still inside? Southern State All were on 95G. I was thinking, go up through the hood. You might catch one of them running or something. We got a call that three subjects had robbed the local bar. 1634, out of vehicle. There's some fleeing from us. Possibly the uh, 64 g perpetrators. Another unit started a pursuit. We're wrong right now. We were in the area, so we approached from a different direction. 74, we get full script. We knew they were coming up towards Ferret, and they turned right in front of us. Going toward Louisiana Avenue. Oh, we're still on Ferret, currently going towards Louisiana Avenue. Looking for a place to bail. If one get out, let me. First thing that come to my mind is gun. Somebody has a gun, they probably will use it if given opportunity. So me, I get real focused. You know, uh, yeah, it's game time. Stop the call! Stop the call! I received a call that a local bar was robbed, and we jump in the chase. Looking for a place to bail. About a block before we got right next to him, the driver bailed out and left the other two guys in there just rolling along. At this point, I'm ready to meet a possible threat. I have my weapon drawn. If I'm met with gunfire, I, you know, I will return. Stop the cup! Stop the cup! Stop the cup! Get out of the cup! Get out of the cup! Get out! Get out! Don't move! Get out! Get out! Get out! In the end, uh, Devin and I caught the two passengers in a vehicle, another unit caught the driver a little distance away, so all three apprehended. Can you breathe all right like this? Yeah. All right, just stay right where you are. Yeah, 95 in the car. 10 we got 95 in the car. You have separated. Looking into the vehicle, I could see a firearm on the floorboard of the back seat. Yeah, we got, I, I got this. Yes, call my mom. Don't do that out there. This ain't the time for that. Be a man, bro. You don't do what you do. You don't do We just chasing you for no reason, then, huh? Y'all just, just cruising, huh? I just had a ride from now. Uh-huh. Well, all right. All right, bro. Well, you gonna get a ride, all right? Good job, bro. Good job, man. That was, that was good, man. That was good. This is not TV. This is real life. Something could have went wrong, like, just that fast. And don't get a chance to do it again.
on TV, they can go back and reenact it so many times they get it right. We have that one shot, and that's it. One time. It's a good day. No other gun off the street. It's hell of a drive, no man. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, it's, I might not be able to catch anybody on foot. <laughs> I can be 100% in this car. <laughs> Oh, um, I just got a camera ticket. <laughs> <laughs>
Where are we going, dude? Labor pain. It's hard to believe that Mardi Gras ends in 10 minutes. Uh, uh, 30, 20, we on scene. Hello. What's going on with you? I'm just having contractions, like, really good. When they started? Like, last night. Last night? Why you called us now? Ooh, woo. Oh, we going to deliver that. Looks like you're going to be naming it after me. I know, it's real. If that's what you got to do. If I deliver it, I get to name it. She was 39 weeks. I mean, she was almost full term. So it's more of a let's get moving for me. Baby, look, I just had a son, too. Your son might play ball with mine. Grandma, you don't go sit in the, uh, in the passenger seat in the front unless you want to drive, baby. Get in the driver's seat. All right. <laughs> I'm coming in the area looking. Got a little Mardi Gras bed. You have to push this. Go ahead and do your thing. He the one that's got to do the two reports. Well, I am, I'm down for delivering your bed. Titus always wants to deliver, always. All right, Mom, I'm gonna get you to the hospital. The beauty of childbirth and all that stuff. It's like, yeah, it's, it's beautiful and all for about three seconds. Then it's just, it's all disgusting. It's all nasty. It's all clean up. It's all, no thanks. I'm good. Come on, Grandma, let's go have us a baby. How frequently are there contractions? About five minutes. Five minutes, and how long do they last? Maybe 30 to 45 seconds. Okay. For pain, no. You having a baby, it's going to be pain. They got to give you an epidural for that. You just got to breathe. You seen it in the movies, how you, they make you go <laughs> and all that? It ain't quite that ridiculous. But you just breathe in through your nose and blow out your mouth. Let me know when another one starts, OK? I'm just timing them. You did any parading or anything this year? Yes. Yeah? What'd you go to? Um, bathroom, non-stop, and then... They're getting a lot closer than, uh, five minutes. We might have this baby yet. You'd remember me forever. Because if I deliver it, I gotta sign the birth certificate. Well, be working with you Yeah, well, is that your plan? Yeah, I want to get there. Oh, yeah? Nah, I'll stick with being a paramedic. You won't be a police officer. What are we naming it? I don't sound nothing like Dan, but we'll let it slide. Almost there. What's going to be horrible is when you get in there and tell you you're too late for an epidural and you got to go all natural. Yeah. I think you're going to be over tonight. Your contractions are too close. Another 12 hours, you'd be laid up in the bed with little Dan. I mean, what was his name again? Rashawn? Mardi Gras full of crazy calls, but it's nice to end the night with a, a normal patient. Let's go upstairs and have a baby. very safe and productive Mardi Gras. So with the help of our law enforcement community, we just want to say thank you. Can't be more proud than to be a, a part of this uh, public safety team. And uh, thanks to everyone for a safe Mardi Gras. Today's one of our, our busiest years uh, in Mardi Gras. And I'd just like to thank our, our EMTs and paramedics for really doing a tremendous job. We had a successful Mardi Gras. It's our last official act for Mardi Gras. We're going to take our leadership team and, and do our ceremonial walk down Bourbon Street. Thank you very much. And now, let's go close Bourbon Street. <laughs> EMS, fire, and police are pretty much like a band of brothers. During times like Mardi Gras, it's even more so because the call volume's higher, the danger level's higher. What we have to do is more stressful, and we all have each other's backs. When Mardi Gras is over, it is a huge, huge relief. It's a sense of accomplishment. We survived. After Mardi Gras, when the city shuts down, the streets are being cleaned, and you've kind of got a time to take a little bit of a breath. Our tradition is to meet at our local bar. 
We go there every year after Mardi Gras. But we f handled it, yeah. right? We just kind of tell each other thank you, I guess. We go to the bar, we have a shot or two, and we essentially pat each other on the back knowing we did a great job and kept everybody safe. Here it is. All right, it's done.